So the next thing I want to talk about is um, talking about aliases. Aliases are another sort of um, very nice convenience that you have uh, using the Bash shell. Um, I'm going to get into it right now. So you've seen me use ls-l, hopefully, or if not me, then somebody else. Uh, you've seen maybe ls-lh, lah, things like that, right? I generally don't like using ls without the flags. I don't find it very easy to read this kind of stuff, and a lot of times I really do want to see all that extra information, right? So usually, usually what I want is ls-lh, right? I want to have it list. I want to see the details, and maybe also I want all of my uh, file sizes to be in a human readable form, so I can you know read them very quickly. It's no fun to be reading like numbers like this and try to figure out how big they are. I'd rather just, you know, get a human readable form. So, one thing that I can do if I get really tired of typing in this stuff every time is um, I can create an alias. So, how does that work? Well, basically what I can do, I'm going to use alias and uh, just break it out down into parts here, guys. So, Inside the brackets here, I'm going to do the command that I want to create an alias for. Okay, so maybe in this situation, I want to do ls-lh. Um, and I also want to see all the files. I want to see all the hidden files too. So I'll do ls-lah. And what I want to do is give this a new name, right? And every time the shell sees this new name, this new word, it's going to... Um, sub in whatever whatever we're going to replace it with. It's basically going to be just like swap in uh, whatever it is for whatever it is. So I'm going to use, I'll use Batman up here. I don't really know why, but it's, it's not like it's easier to type in Batman than this, but well, whatever. It'll give us a good idea. Um, so if I type in Batman now, what it's going to do, it's going to see that Batman. It's going to sub in uh, whatever the... Um, the other part of the alias is and then just run that and I can just build stuff on top of stuff again I can use BT and that's going to equal Batman and I'll just clear and I can run BT it's gonna give me the same thing right so basically this is a way that I can sort of like set up shortcuts and um, the short gets shortcuts will get like run as normally um, so this is very, very useful. Um, the one that I've actually got set up on this machine is CL. Now you'll notice when I type in CL, um, it's doing the same thing as clear. And that's because I've set up a alias already. And the one thing to keep in mind is that when you're just typing in alias something, um, that is not going to be persistent. That's going to last about as long as you've got that terminal window open. As soon as I close this terminal window, the whole Batman stuff is not going to work, right? So if I just close this one, and I'm on a different shell now, so let me go turn this up. Try to run Batman. It's not going to work, right? Did you mean Patman? No, I did not. So how do I make this persistent? Well, um, to do this, there's a couple different ways. Um, probably the best way, or the most common way, is to be looking in a file called .bashrc. This exists in your home directory on Matrix. Um, when you take a look inside .bashrc, what you can see is, most likely what you'll see is a whole bunch of stuff that already exists there and um, you can add things to this and basically what happens is every time you open a terminal window uh, with this user it's going to execute everything it finds in the dot bash rc file and that it's just going to be it's going to be set for every terminal window you've got open so you can see that i've got already a bunch of stuff that i've already set up just because i like having things be pretty easy you can see here that all I've done is I've added the command that you saw before um, in my bash rc file and all of these things are going to get executed. 
you can see I've got a bunch of different stuff for like different programs I've got. I've got for git log, I've got for diff, so I prefer using color diff if I can. I don't even know if I've got that installed. If I don't have color diff installed, then it's not going to work, obviously. Um, I've also got things like uh, for news, I can set up a curl and it's just going to grab me the news, for example. So if I type in news, it's going to uh, up, grab this from a website and just uh, print it to my terminal so I can basically read the newspaper on my terminal if I really feel like it.